indigenous settler one century from now, the send off ceremony is starting. We see the three Taikonauts that will be embarking on this incredible journey. They're the Shenzhou 17 crew members. Now, a send off ceremony is being held in their honor to send them off. And this is the Wentian Pavilion, and people are gathering at what is being known as the Yuan Meng Yuan Square to send off the Shenzhou 17 crew. You can feel that excitement, that warmth there at Yuan Meng Yuan, where people have gathered to send the Taikonauts off. We're talking about primary school students, we're talking about uh, residents of Jiuquan, their colleagues, their family, among the people sending them off. Comrade Commander in Chief, we are following the order to carry out Shenzhou 17 man space flight mission. Now we are ready to go. Please indicate. Member of the PLA Astronaut Corps, Taikonaut, Tang Hongbo, Taikonaut, Tang Shengjie, Taikonaut, Jiang Xinlin. Proceed. Yes. Salute. And the send-off ceremony continues. The Taikonauts will now take a shuttle to the launch pad near the square. We'll be following every step of the way and bringing the latest on this mission to you. As we continue to monitor the send-off ceremony, here is a little bit more information about who these three Taikonauts are and what we do know about them. The three Taikonauts were announced on Wednesday, actually. They are Tang Hongbo, Tang Shengjie, and Jiang Xinling. They are the youngest crew, as you would recall our reporter told us just now. 48-year-old Tang Hongbo, he's the oldest of the crew. He's the commander of the Shenzhou 17 mission. They joined the People's Liberation Army Air Force back in 1995. Tang's first journey into space was in 2021 on the Shenzhou 12 mission as a crew member, and this time he will be the commander. The Shenzhou 12 was the first manned mission among the 11 launches to build China's Tiangong Space Station. It will be Tang Shengjie and Jiang Xinling's first time in space. Both are young, aspiring astronauts. You can see them waving to the crowd there as they prepare to board that shuttle that will take them to the launch tower. It's a beautiful day there in Jiuquan. 34-year-old Tang was once a fighter pilot. He graduated from China's Aviation University of Air Force in 2012. Tang was selected as a Taikonaut only three years ago. And 35-year-old Jiang Xinli was also selected as a Taikonaut in 2020. And before that, he was professional tank driver and fighter pilot. During his 10-year flying career, Jiang was awarded as a first-class pilot with safety flights reaching over 1,000 hours. Now the three Taikonauts are boarding that shuttle that will take them to the launch tower. We'll be following their trip every step of the way. We'll be able to see the route. They will be escorted by a motorcade. Uh, all of them waving happily to the camera, looking calm, cool, and collected. I remember um, Mr. Tan, the commander, said in an interview that he was feeling very calm because everything that he trained for had prepared him for this moment, so he was calm, he was ready, and he's bringing with him two new Taikonauts um, who belong to the third generation of China's trained astronauts. We're talking about all of this with my studio guests here. The three Taikonauts, Tang Hongbo, Tang Shengjie, and Jiang Xinling, are now ready to leave the Wentian Pavilion the Yuan Yuan Square, and now they're heading over to the launch tower. Professor Yang, let me bring you here as we continue to tell our viewers what's happening here 
That trip from Yuan Meng Yuan to the launch tower we've witnessed many times. It will yes. take a, a little more than 10 minutes. Exactly. And uh, we'll be seeing some landmarks in Jiuquan along the way. Everything constructed. Oh, all right, the uh, shuttle bus is getting ready to leave. Well, uh, this is the most beautiful season of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Is it? Yes. Uh, you can see the forest. Uh, very, uh, you know that in the uh, in the brown color is very very impressive there. And you know that mm, my first trip to the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center is in 2019. You know, it is my first time to witness of the Milky Way mm. in the sky of the summer night. Mm. So it is very bright and very clean and. Uh, very beautiful. It does look beautiful. It's, uh, it's, it's a very beautiful autumn scene here. We will continue to monitor the movement of the three Taikonauts here. But in the meantime, let's also go live to CGTN reporter Sun Ye, who is in Jiuquan, watching all of this for us right now. Sun Ye, we are seeing the Taikonauts embark on that short trip from Yuan to the launch tower. Tell us what you see. Well, you said this is the best season uh, to be in Jiuquan, and you know what? I am at the best place, um, arguably, to see the rocket launch. This is perhaps the best viewing point. We are 1.5 kilometers from the uh, rocket launch pad. You sit there. You can't see the rocket now because it's still wrapped by the rotation platforms, all four stages uh, of them. And leading up to the launch, as the uh, day goes on, uh, the stated the stages will unwrap one after another. Actually, not in that order because the part that's uh, shielding or wrapping the part where the spaceship and Tycoon are staying will reveal last. But we will let you know when that happens. Now, here uh, we have uh, also confirmed with uh, experts here uh, from different systems and they've told us throughout the night and right and until now everything is in good condition everything is in good order and they have every reason to expect the mission to go as planned and smoothly um, the, we've talked to uh, people with the rocket system and experts there say um, the rocket has actually been ready uh, around a week ago when it's rolled out and over the past week of of course, up until now, they've been checking, they've been rechecking um, the system that make, to make sure everything is okay. And the rocket uh, engineer told us if there's one thing we want to know about the long March 2F carrier rocket that's sending the Taikonauts to space, it's that the, this model of rocket is reliable, it's safe. So nothing to worry about that. And it's the same way with the spaceship system. Um, engineers with the uh, Shenzhou spaceship system have also been telling us um, they, they also have been checking and rechecking uh, the condition and status of the spaceship in the last few days until now and many of them have been working here uh, starting in the middle of the night and um, around three o'clock in the morning two or three o'clock in the morning they have loaded some of the most time sensitive uh, package inside the spaceship that's including some biological material some experimental uh, material that's expected uh, to help maybe in the future contribute to uh, cancer treatment and drug development but of course maybe we're getting ahead uh, of ourselves right now the as you you said the Shenzhou 17 crew has just uh, departed from their uh, from the Yuan Meng Yuan Square, and they should be something like 30 minutes away from the launch tower. We will uh, let you know when they arrive and anything new happens here. Back to you, Zhong Shi. So yeah, we are watching uh, where they are going, so we, we know exactly where they are. But thank you so much for that update. We're watching every step of the way. That short ah. ride from Yuan Meng Yuan <laughs> to the launch tower. The shuttle bus escorted in a motorcade, people lining up the street, a very noisy, a very happy scene there. A beautiful day in Jiuquan, as we can see, early morning there, just past 8.30, and people lining up the streets to send off the three Taikonauts. We're watching them as they make their way to the launch tower. And on that route, we just passed some of the iconic landmarks in Jiuquan. First, there was the Space Memorial Tower, and what we just saw was the iconic Rainbow Bridge at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. 
um, official name, Shenzhou French Bridge. Uh, looks like a sailing ship, symbolizing China's journey of exploring space. And a lot of people feel that resembles the shape of a rainbow, so hence its name, Rainbow Bridge. Now that bird's eye view of the Zhou Chan shows us a quiet, beautiful, sunny day there in the city. We always could use a good day, we could use a good vibe on a send-off with the Taikonauts. They are minutes away, I believe, Professor Yang, from reaching the launch tower, and this is the same route we see every time. It's a familiar route. We're getting a good vibe today. Yes, uh, when I live in the Zhejiang Satellite Ground Center, it's not very far from the launch pad to, mm. the, uh, to the center of the Zhejiang Satellite Ground Center. Mm. Uh, so this is a short journey, uh, and you know that uh, you, you will notice that during the setup ceremony, uh, in the years before, our astronauts all hold a small box. So that is a device for ventilation because in the uh, space it will be feel a, a little bit hot. Mm. So we need the ventilation. But today you can just see that it is approved. So our the hands of astronauts are free. The box is mounted just uh, uh, on the waist of the astronauts. Mm. So they feel more comfortable. Uh, and you know, so we have continuous improve our. Uh, this is uh, uh, indo uh, intra uh, vehicular uh, space suit. Uh, although it is not com more complex than the EVA space field, but still uh, it is very expensive and uh, it is a very important measure to ensure the mm -hmm. safety of our astronauts. Actually speaking, just before uh, this today, uh, including the astronauts, they've already conducted uh, the wet dress rehearsal. Uh, so uh, they wear this the same suit mm -hmm. and uh, uh, go into the uh, Shenzhou 7 uh, spaceship and uh, uh, conduct the drill. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything is tested and to ensure, you know, that the launch is not only a business of the launch vehicle and the Shenzhou spaceship. Mm -hmm. It is a work task of the whole system, the T T T and C system, the launch side system, and even the uh, the landing side system. Because you know that uh, when an uh, emergency case happened, uh, the recovery team also have to work. Today they are also standing by near the launch site, mm. uh, and also you know that there are other critical systems, including our TNLI and data relay satellite. They all these systems plays a very important role in every aspect. So uh, it is. Uh, Harmony. We have the coordination of all these subsystems, uh, all these system, and also you know that just before the launch, the uh, usually in uh, Jiuqian Satellite Launch Center, we call the uh, commander the zero commander, uh, zero commander. So zero commander will. Uh, uh, confirm that every system is okay mm. and even every ground station is okay uh, for the launch mm. and then uh, to go to the next step. So I mean, it is. Yes. Yeah, they are getting ever closer now. The aerial shots we saw just now showing that the motorcade is getting closer to the launch tower. Mr. Liu, Professor Liu, I want to bring you into our discussion here also. I mean, every time I watch this, and I've watched this you know, quite many times, I still get a little emotional because, I mean, you know, crowds are gathering to send you off, but they can only be so far. For this part of the route, you're pretty much, you know, on your own um, with the motorcade. And I pay special attention to how they speak, the, the Taikonauts. I mean, they, they speak in such a calm, such a, um, you know, cool, calm, collected fashion, indicating that they're ready for this, that they've trained for this. So I was curious, Professor Liu, when you watch this as a viewer, as a Chinese national, what is going through your mind right now? Well, uh, because uh, uh, I'm getting older and uh, I have a lot of good memories. Uh, actually, in the early 70s, when China launched the first satellite into the space, we, uh, we saw nothing of it. But just at this news, uh, you know, uh, when I was a kid, you know, people gathered together. Uh, we boycott the school, actually, uh, to, uh, to celebrate. Uh, on our own, uh, you know, uh, we were uh, there simply listening to the radio mm. and what is going on that is so exciting. Now we witness with our own eyes uh, what is going on and also the uh, even uh, the explanation from the uh, space classroom. Uh, so uh, this is really so much uh, uh, sensational that's uh, uh, really inject the passion. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, some of the passion is really actually mixed because we were filled with a lot of uh, 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 mystic uh, type of uh, fairy tales over what is going on in the space, in the moon, etc. And now we see more of a scientific approach 
um, but of course also uh, carried with our passion, with our fascination. And so therefore, uh, it is really a something of uh, a uh, sort of emotional bond mm. between history, between uh, our conventional belief, and now between the reality and between also mm. the prospect of uh, further exploration uh, of the space and expansion of the, our human footprint. Mm. I mean, it's always a mix of emotions on this day. You feel excited, you feel happy for that, but you also feel nervous about the mission as we can see they're getting closer, Professor Yang, to the yes. launch tower. Now we can see the launch tower in the distance. I think it's always a, a combination of feelings and emotions on this day, even though you know that they've trained specifically for this day for so long in their life. Tang, Hong, Tang Hongbo, of course, belonging to the second generation, and the two uh, new Taikonauts belonging to the third generation, which uh, who were selected back in 2020. So for the third batch of Taikonauts, they were selected in 2020. They've had about a little over two years mm -hmm. of training. Yep. How ready are they, Professor Yang, for this mission? Well, you know that in the third batch of astronauts of China, we have eight, 18 crew, uh, 18 members. So seven of them are pilots, were trained as pilots, and seven of them are, were trained as uh, uh, flight engineers, and mm -hmm. four of them were trained as uh, payload experts. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we have uh, one female uh, in the third batch. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe that in the future, they will be very important for the operation of China's manned space station. Because you know that the first batch of astronauts we all choose chosen they were all chosen from those born in 1960s. Hmm. So they were already all more than 15 years old. And you know that uh, today, uh, the, the second batch is plays a major uh, leading role uh, in our operation phase. You know that uh, Tang Hongbo is already the second commander. Hmm. Uh, the first one is Mr. Chen Dong uh, hmm. in the Shenzhou 40 mission. So I think in the future, uh, I believe there are also many of our uh, second batch astronauts act as the commander. But hmm. I believe that sooner or later, we can see that our third batch uh, also be the commander of our missions to the uh, Tianggu Space Station. Moreover, you see that this year we have a very important information. Just mm. several days before, uh, during the interview uh, by the major media. Yes, we can, yes, we can see the, launch, the, the launch, launch complex. The launch complex there, they're getting ever, you know, ever closer to the destination, the yes. first destination of the yes. day. Of course, uh, they have from, a from this video, farther destination yeah. later in the day. From this video, you can see that still all the rotational platforms of the uh, service tower is still closed. Are closed. Uh, they will be to make they will be a close the volume for the, to protect the launch vehicle. Mm. So it has a very good environment. Mm. And after the astronauts go inside the cabin, and mm. the, the ground team have already checked everything is okay. Mm. And it is very interesting that the the order of the uh, open of the rotational platforms. Mm. So uh, the top one will be open first. Mm. Then uh, the next opening will be the, the, the bottom right? no, 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 the, 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 the bottom one. Uh, mm. First one on the top and mm. then the bottom one. Mm. Uh, and then uh, and then goes up. Okay. So uh, you, this is because you know that the uh, as uh, as we've already discussed, uh, the long march two F uh, is a uh, is a critical part of today's launch. Mm. And the long march two F is the only human rated launch vehicle of China mm -hmm. today. In the future, we will have a, a derivative of the uh, Long March 10, because Long mm -hmm. March 10 have two versions. The smaller version will also uh, be, yes? I think they're pulling over now. They're yeah, pulling exactly. over now to the pad. Uh, and if you're just joining us here on CGTN, this is our special coverage on the Shenzhou 17 mission with three Taikonauts um, getting ready to be lifted off into space. The countdown you see on the right bottom corner of the screen is a countdown until liftoff. Uh, in about two and a half hours time, the liftoff will happen. We'll be bringing you comprehensive coverage of the mission today. A beautiful view of the launch complex here, as Professor Yang was talking about. The rotational platforms are still closed. They will open later when the Taikonauts have entered the cabin. And the reason is that 
because the uh, Lama 2F is the only human rated uh, uh, launch vehicle of China, the most important feature is that it has an emergency escape system. This includes an uh, emergency escape valve on its top. Mm. So uh, when the side hatch of the orbital module has already been uh, closed, uh, so uh, we must uh, acti activate the emergency escape system to ensure the safety of our astronauts, especially mm. after fueling. Because you know that we have more than 400 tons of propellants mm. uh, to pull into the tanks of the launch vehicle. Mm. Uh, so uh, if anything wrong happens, not only the ground type will can you know that in the launch complex we have a very uh, big pipe, mm. uh, very big pipe. With the, with this help, the ground team can go through the pipe to the underground cabin to protect, protect themselves. But for the astronauts, because they were already inside the cabin, and uh, they can only use the emergency escape system to uh, escape mm. in a very short moment from the uh, if anything dangerous happened. Mm. So uh, that is the reason why we uh, first open the platform on the top. Mm. That's very interesting. Got it. Professor Liu, aren't you enjoying this beautiful view t here today? I mean, clear, clean view of the launch complex that gives us a pretty good idea of what's going to happen, where the Taikonauts are. They have exited the vehicle and are now making their way. They're walking to the tower. Yeah. They will be taking an elevator to the ninth floor. Nine is the magical number. They will be taking that lift to the ninth floor. Yeah. Uh, because the launch vehicle is uh, the total height of the launch vehicle is more than 50 meters, it's very high, so they will use the elevator to reach the cabin. Mm. It's a they beautiful will, landscape. Right? Beautiful landscape, yeah. uh, uh, absolutely. And and after we have some the cheering clouds, and now with the, uh, with the tranquility, mm. and uh, with the blessing of the entire Earth, uh, with such a complex that is precisely arranged and uh, also uh, made flawless, uh, for such a launch, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, actually uh, the facial expression of this uh, astronauts, they are uh, more uh, relaxed, uh, more while our viewers are really getting more stressed and mm. getting more tension. I know my see. heart is racing. My heart races <laughs> at critical right. points during this mission. Exactly. Multiple times I can feel my yeah, heart racing. We, we see the confidence in, that, in, in themselves, but we still you know, keep our best blessing for them. Beautiful mm. smiles, beautiful confidence that gives me a boost of confidence about the mission. Uh, I'm the nervous type. I can, make a, I can never make a Taikonaut, but it's absolutely beautiful to watch how calm they are. Actually, yesterday we were talking, you know, how their uh, parents and uh, their wives and their kids are really feeling about this, you know, seeing all this. I, I think they, they also have a very much mixed feeling. They, uh, they are, they're getting more nervous. Absolutely. And, uh, but of course, you know, with all uh, the confidence they have received uh, through the three years of, of massive drill, uh, and, uh, they sure are much. watching this as well, every Definitely. step of the way. Yes. And we've seen, you know, camera crews inside their homes, who you know watch with them. It's it's a very tearful moment. It's a happy moment, happy tears. Sure. But then, of course, they're nervous um, for their loved ones as they embark on this incredible journey in their life. Even if they just make this mission once, it's going to be incredible. Now they have arrived at the ninth floor, Professor Yang. Very yeah. soon they will be. Um, they will be helped by you know other staff. They will their boots will come off before yes. they enter the uh, cabin. The, the the ground staff usually comes from two subsystems. One is the astronaut system, mm. who are in charge of the uh, life support of the astronaut and also in charge of the e, uh, EVA and IVA space suit. So mm. they will conduct many checkings for the uh, for the status, uh, technical details of the IVA space suit, and also ensure that the status of the astronauts is uh, is normal. Mm. And also they. The ground team, another ground team is from the Shenzhou space ship system. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, you know, that still uh, there are maybe uh, two or three uh, ground staff of this team inside the Shenzhou spaceship to uh, prepare everything. Mm. Uh, you know, that's, uh, and uh, after that, they will, the ground team will help 
the astronaut to go inside the cabin. Mm. You see that, uh, you may notice that just uh, behind their head, uh, there is a helmet. Uh, mm. There is a face mask of the helmet. Uh, you know that because uh, it is fragile. So when entering the uh, cabin uh, from the side hatch of the auto module, the ground uh, ground staff will help the astronaut to protect mm. the helmet, to uh, to protect the uh, the face mask of the helmet. So this is also very very important because we must ensure an airtight seating. Uh, when the if anything wrong happened to the cabin, because you know that the uh, RDA space suits they just wearing can put, uh, provide the second protection for them. Uh, uh, you can recognize that, that as a redundancy uh, to uh, protect their lives. So this is also uh, because it is very complex. Although we have you know that uh, the oxygen supply, ventilations uh, inside the cabin, but still uh, we need some checking of everything. Mm. I mean, these gentlemen sure know their angles. They're finding every camera there. They were waving at the camera in front of them. And uh, one of them, I think it's the commander. Is it the Mr. commander who sits in the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Tom. Mr. Tom. Yes, he, uh, he checked out the other camera to his upper left, and he waved to that camera, mm. making sure that people can see them all the time and know exactly what they're doing. They're being seated now before they enter the cabin. They will enter uh, in a particular order, one by one into the capsule. We'll see that happen momentarily. Um, Professor Young, what are they doing now? Uh, as I mentioned, they, uh, they are waiting for the uh, ground team to help them to uh, finish the uh, verification and all kinds of checking. Mm. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, until this moment, still there are ground staff inside the orbital module and even in the re-entry capsule uh, mm. to fix uh, everything. Uh, you see that uh, there are so many stators we must check and to be configured. Uh, so right, this the, the, very the nice. boots, You can see on yeah. the right, you can see the cameras uh, of the inside of the uh, mm. orbital module and inside the re-entry capsule. Mm. I mean, everyone is working in such a smooth manner, a smooth fashion, indicating that they've done this many, many times yeah. in preparation so, uh, for this. The, the ground staff is helping the astronauts to take off their boots. Mm. Uh, and you know, that's the China, the Shenzhou spaceship adopted the three module design. Mm. The orbital module at the front and the uh, re-entry capital in the middle are pressurized. Mm. You know, we're hearing instructions from multiple monitoring stations. Uh, the, uh, this voice comes from the, uh, as I mentioned, the Commander Zero uh, to confirm every ground station is okay. Got it, got it. We'll continue to hear those um, voices as we get along with this mission, monitoring stations, ground stations, reporting to Commander Zero Yeah. as we um, move to the next phase of today's mission. We'll continue to hear their voices throughout our coverage. Uh, so the sequence to enter the Shenzhou spaceship is that they first, look, you've already seen on the right is the side hatch of the, uh, of the orbital module. Mm. And also there is a hole on the payload fairing. Mm. Uh, so uh, they will first enter this orbital module with the mm. help of the ground team and then go down to the uh, re-entry capsule. Mm. Is because, it like a slide down? They just yeah, slide yeah, yeah, down? Yeah, yeah, exactly, step down, uh, step down. Yeah, and you know that because the commander, Tang Hongbo, stayed in the middle, mm. so he will be the last one to enter the cabin. Got it. Uh, it is the inner volume of the uh, orbital module and uh, the uh, range capsule. You know that the total inner volume is only seven cubic meters. Mm. Very, very narrow. It, it uh, does look very narrow. It does look very tight. So everyone is, is, you know, there's not a lot of room for you to move around. You're not supposed to move around once you have entered the cabin. You know now, that now we're seeing the inside yeah, exactly. of the capsule. Of so course. on the top left, uh, we can see the uh, video inside the orbital module, mm. and uh, on the bottom right, we can see the camera inside the re-entry capsule. Mm. Uh, these two cameras inside the two modules uh, mm. of the Shenzhou spaceship, mm. uh, because you know that today we China has already improved our sequence uh, from the launch to the docking. We only take about six and a half hours. Mm. So. Uh, it will be more convenient for the astronaut to see only a very short period in mm. this very narrow space. Mm. So only after... But they will spend about two hours before the liftoff, right? 
inside, yes, as I mentioned, uh, for all kinds of checking. Uh, so yes. th this is very necessary to ensure their safety. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. So a total mm. flight time of about eight hours, yeah. thirty minutes inside. You can also you may notice that uh, in the bottom right video we can see the chairs of the three astronauts. Yes, each we one, can. each one is customized according to the shape of each astronaut. Got it. Got it. So that they're more comfortable. They were, not only seats. for comfort, be more comfortable, but, but for, for safety. their safety. safety reasons. Because you know that during the ascending and the re-entry of the capsule, mm. they will experience very, very intense, intensive vibration, mm. and also and also the G forces. Mm. Uh, the in normal case, in the normal ascending and the descending, the mm. G forces, uh, the peak value is only three point six, mm. uh, uh, which means that the uh, three point six times than their own mass. Mm. Another confirmation from the voices we heard mm. uh, from the uh, chief commander to the uh, to the, the ground to the ground, stations. Stations, uh, ground stations. Yes, and the ground stations will continue to monitor the flight once the liftoff happens. Yes, yeah, exactly. Also, they have multiple ground stations along the trajectory of the. Uh, how, how many do we know? How many ground stations? Uh, that depends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as we know, we have uh, stations in Jiuquan yeah. Satellite Center, also in Weinan, yeah. uh, yeah. also in yeah. Taiyuan Satellite yeah. Center yeah. in Qingdao, yeah. and yeah. also we have our space tracking ships mm. uh, on the Pacific Ocean mm. because you know that the uh, separation of the launch vehicle and general uh, spaceship usually happened in the, uh, in, the, uh, uh, the, in the Yellow Sea or in the East Sea of China uh, just uh, near the eastern coast of China mm. Now we can still see, look, uh, we can still, still see ground staff inside our central space, spaceship to prepare everything mm. And also, you can see that just in the orbital module, it is full of cargoes. Full of cargoes. Yeah, because you know, as I mentioned, uh, we now only need six hours to go to the station, so uh, it is not necessary necessary to provide so many free space for the astronauts. So we can have more cargoes now uh, inside the orbital module. Mm -hmm. And I believe it is very interesting. Also, we have some fresh food prepared for the Shenzhou sixteen crew. Mm. And is the food also, you know, custom made? to cater to the tastes of the tiger knots or absolutely you know that because you know your blood will be redistributed in outer space with mm. the influence of microgravity so you, usually your tongues will more uh, less sensitive uh, comparing with that in the on the ground right. so uh, more salty and more spicy food are usually uh, will be better uh, be, be welcome <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, actually, uh, you know, uh, when they really are detached from the Earth gravity, and there is also risk of degeneration of their bone system, so osteoporosis uh, uh, is likely to happen. So, therefore, they need to prepare uh, the food uh, with more vitamin and uh, uh, with more energy uh, inside. And cattle. So, that's right. So that uh, th that has to be custom made for. So it's each dietary of preparation as well to help them really adapt to these. Conditions. Yeah, the, definitely. It's not only uh, you know adapt to the current condition, but also that uh, to help them on a long term to restore mm -hmm. their health condition uh, when they really come back. Uh, so this is the drill. This drill. Uh, T minus five minutes and counting. Mm. So this is the drill. Well, I'm always happy to, to, to hear that they're getting a variety of, you know, foods up there in space. It's, oh, let's face it, six months is a long time. We're going to have to consider um, But that's a balance. Uh, from the view of efficiency, we hope that the astronaut can stay in the station as long as possible. Mm. But from to consider their influence on their health, so it's shorter. Mm. And the countdown you see on our screen indicates that the liftoff will happen in just over two hours' time. Yeah. And the Taikonauts are getting ready to enter the module. What is this countdown for? This is a simulation, a drill. Okay.
All right, they are doing a last-minute drill of a this countdown drill, to we what can I saw. Test every system whether it is okay or not. So the, although it is a numer numerical si simulation, mm -hmm. but it is also a very important step to ensure the safety of the flight. Absolutely. So in a little two hours' time, the liftoff will happen. The ground staff, the ground commanders, have just conducted a last minute drill, a countdown to make sure that all systems are working effectively and efficiently. And also very interesting, you can see the three astronauts and uh, inside the pants of uh, IV space, so there are diapers. They are diapers. Yeah, because they need to stay there for so many hours, mm. so uh, it is needed. But this diaper is quite different from those in daily usage, uh, because even uh, I, uh, my, one of my friends from the China Astronaut Center mentioned that even uh, two grams of this diaper can absorb more than one kilograms of urine. Super diapers. Super diaper, Super exactly. Diapers. <laughs> yeah. Professor Yang, can you tell me if they had a breakfast today, because this is early in the day. Very, very early. This is very, very early. It's, very early. It's, uh, we're almost 9 a.m. now, Beijing yeah. time. Now the ground staff uh, help the, uh, what called the zero three, the Jiang Xinlin, into Beijing the cabin. Mm. Uh, you may notice that with the help, and also uh, very carefully protect his helmet. Mm. So the first the, Taikonaut is yeah. now First, the the this is the camera inside the orbital module. The orbital module, yeah. and he will slide down to the return the capsule. Team. Yes, the ground team helped him to uh, go down to mm. the re-entry capsule. Mm. You can see the hatch is very small. The hatch is very small. They have to be very careful because there's a lot of cargo. There's a lot of sensitive equipment. Okay. These are their custom-made seats. Yeah, yeah. The commander will be sitting in the middle. The other two Taikonauts by his side. This is, we're still seeing that trail of one veteran plus two new Taikonauts. And new recruitment. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and they belong to two generations of Chinese Taikonauts, so, the second uh, and third Mr. batch of Chinese Taikonauts. So Mr. Jiang Xinlin sit in the, in the seat closest to the camera. Closest to the camera, yeah. that's... So because he is zero three. So he's zero 03 on this mission, closest to the camera, um, beside the commander. Uh, no, the next one will be Mr. Uh, Tang Shengjie. Mr. Tang Shengjie is a, another Taikonaut, a new Taikonaut, embarking on this journey. Mm -hmm. This is his first mission as well. So Mr. Tang Shengjie is uh, zero 02. And he also. Tang Shengjie is zero 02 of the mission. Yeah. We just saw zero 03 already yeah, yeah, entered. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So first, they, he, they, from the side hatch, they enter the auto module and then go down to the re-entry capsule. Mm. And he is zero two, so he's a very, he has a very special task. You know, mm. that during the re-entry, after, uh, after touchdown, he has the uh, 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 responsibility to cut off the parachute. So this is a task. Is it always zero two who cuts? Always zero two, okay, because zero the two. button is uh, very close to him. Got it. It doesn't matter how, you know, the cabin landed in, in, in what angle, in what way? Yeah. The cabin exactly. landed is always they must zero have cut it off Because maybe the wind will be very strong and it will be, will be very dangerous if they uh, did not cut down the parachute. Okay. So you can see uh, he is in the seat, uh, uh, the most farthest to the camera. Hmm. He's, still, he's still making his way, I think he's still adjusting. Yeah. They're talking to the ground, ground staff. Yeah. So uh, you may notice that. What the is what is what is this? Can we tell? It's. Uh, there are it's all, all kinds of issues they need to handle, and also uh, many confirmation works for them. Mm. Now the last this one is, will be the commander. Yes, this is the orbital module. This is the yeah. return capsule. Uh, the, the button I mentioned is just uh, close to him, just uh, on the side of the hatch. Mm. Uh, uh, sorry, on the side of the cabin uh, to cut off the parachute. And the next, last one will be the commander, Tang Hongbo. This is the commander, Tang Hongbo. He's kind of a legend himself. He, he will be the first um, Taikonaut 
to return actually to exactly. the Tiangong Space yeah, yeah, Station, yeah, yeah. and he set a record of the shortest interval between, between two, two between two flight missions, manned flight missions. So he's already a legend. So as I mentioned, the second batch of astronauts, although they only have seven members, but they will play a major role in mm. this operation and the uh, application, application and the, uh, development phase. And the third batch has a, has a lot more Taikonauts, as you mentioned, mm. uh, than the second batch. What happens to the people who didn't get selected? Uh, well, you know that we also have a backup crew just uh, in this Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Uh, For sure. The backup crew of the uh, Shenzhou Seven. I should also emphasize that it is also a great honor to be the backup crew. Absolutely. S still, they have very high score. Just you have to be outstanding to be selected to be in the third batch in the first place. And even, yeah, 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 even if you yeah. didn't make the mission, even if you didn't make Shenzhou 17, you're still a backup on Taikana. That's a great honor in itself. You know that uh, every fighter pilot are very outstanding uh, person personnel, mm. and these astronauts like that are even more outstanding uh, fighter pilots. Mm. So we can see uh, how uh, perfect they are. Mm. Well, for Mr. Tang, you know the, he already created his legend in his l whole life career, and now he's really re-entering this cabinet, and uh, it shows that uh, <coughs> you know his dedication to the uh, type of the work mm. instead of uh, uh, creating his own ego. Uh, and this is really reflective of the Chinese value. Uh, you know, they, uh, for some people, they can really uh, boast for their whole life. Uh, you know, uh, writing biographies, you know, uh, uh, having course. interviews, etc. That's already enough. For you his, can sit on this achievement. Trip. You can dwell on this achievement for the rest of your life. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how many how many astronauts in the world do we have? How many taikonauts yeah. do we have? I mean, this is the achievement of a lifetime for sure. And and this year, 2023, also marks 20 years since China's first. Yeah, Taikonaut? and also the, the second entry for him space. is also uh, uh, telling the world that uh, uh, it is not really uh, uh, highly injurious to the uh, astronauts, uh, you know, by traveling. So therefore, you know, he quickly recovered uh, from all possible the uh, damage to the house, and now you know he's uh, uh, back on track. So therefore, uh, you know. It also uh, gave uh, uh, their relatives and their families a sort of mm. assurance that uh, uh, they, uh, they are still uh, in a very healthy condition. And mm. uh, they turn out to be superb heroes. Professor, do you think Mr. Yang Li Wei, China's first taikonaut, is watching this also? Yes, absolutely. I believe ah, so. Yang Li. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so a 20, 20 years 20th ago. anniversary. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, he, he also created it's a, a great history. year. And uh, now there are uh, young successors with more of their vigor and passion and also with uh, a far better preparedness after uh, 20 years of experience. Mm. And this is the youngest crow we've seen so far with an average age of 39 years old. Of course, Mr. Tang Hongbo is older, the other two taikonauts were born in 1988 and 1989. That's my age bracket. I can't imagine doing something remotely close to what they're pulling off today. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Tang Hongbo is not only the oldest in this crew, but also he is the oldest in the second batch of astronauts of China. Mm. He has a master's degree, uh, and the other two have bachelor's degree. So he participated in Shenzhou 12 in yes. 2021, yes. two years ago. That's what we mean by the shortest interval between uh, to manned flight missions. Yeah, uh, Shenzhou 12 mission is a very important milestone in China's uh, space activity. We just heard the test uh, interpretation of the computer and trajectory. The uh, theoretical trajectory. It must be checked normally. It is carefully uh, designed and calculated. 
uh, usually, you know, that to launch and running with another spacecraft in orbit, we usually adopt the zero launch window, which means that the accuracy of the launch time, the late off moment, must be accurate than one second. But because you know that, that we have a margin of energy on the orbital, so today we have a zero launch window to zero launch window, which means that we can also have a, still have an adjustment within several minutes. I mean, Professor Liu recapped for us right from the 1970s. Um, it, it's, it's been a long time, and it's also been 20 years since China's first Taikanad. Mr. Yang Li Wei was able to pull off that first flight successfully. So, I mean, to be able to see all of this must be, you know, remarkable for everyone involved in China's manned space program. And Yang Li Wei flew alone. And yeah. they've got, you know, company today. I, I think mm -hmm. it must be, I'm not going to say easier, but you are, as human beings, you are naturally reassured, you're more relieved um, in the company of your kind, of, you know, fellow yes. human beings, of the fellow colleagues, of Father Taikonauts. Yeah, behind all of this is, is really uh, the economic power that really propels China's uh, uh, the rapid research uh, and advance of the technology in the outer space, and uh, uh, also that uh, the uh, Chinese uh, uh, ambition really to be there to share uh, the uh, uh, scientific data with the rest of the world and also to have the commercial launch. Of course, we are also in competition uh, with some of the uh, leading stations from the United States and from the former USSR, and uh, now. Uh, the unique part is that uh, China is really proposing a inclusive and open uh, operation and sharing of the data mm. uh, for commercial use and for the uh, uh, help of the uh, civic use around the whole world. And also we work very closely with the uh, United Nations mm. uh, on such type of pro programs. And this is really uh, something that uh, uh, it is the Chinese dream, but also it contributes to the uh, the uh, community of the shared future for the entire mankind. And uh, now uh, we have gone through several stages of uh, our uh, space uh, development, and actually since 1992 when we had the blueprint to uh, have our space station and uh, with the rocket development, also with the uh, further expansion of our uh, space program. And now we come to today and see that uh, uh, people are really now getting regularized actually with such sort of activities is no longer a sort of adventure, uh, but it's a regular activity. And also the, for, daily, uh, for uh, ordinary people on daily basis, we, uh, we have the GPS system that, uh, there, uh, that's there to direct us to any destination we would desire. And also the, uh, with more of the uh, traffic, uh, load that people can really enjoy. So it's all thanks to the Chinese, uh, uh, the efforts, and also you know, the uh, entire uh, inputs the whole country has really put into uh, to explore the outer space and direct us uh, into a new fashion of life. Extraordinary efforts over a span of decades contributing to what we're seeing today. If you think yes. about it, really, it's, 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 it's miraculous. It's magical. Um, it's worth a celebration. I mean, they're holding some books, some uh, handbook. manuals, yeah, handbook. Yeah, hand, uh, the handbook also, uh, there are all kinds of procedures, all critical steps, and also mm -hmm. uh, all configurations, specifications, they must check. And also- Are they checking off items on the list one by one? One by one. And yeah. also, you know, that more important thing in the handbook is the, uh, what to handle in abnormal cases. Mm. Uh, so not only those in the normal procedure will be included, but the abnormal will be more important, I believe. Mm. So that is also this, the uh, how important the importance of the commander and also the other uh, Mr. Zero Two uh, act uh, as backup for each other as a pilot of this uh, Shenzhou spacecraft. If anything wrong happened to the automatic system, they can uh, uh, all, uh, they can pilot the ship manually. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important measure to ensure the safety 
of the flight. I always find it a little amusing that they are holding these hard copies. Um, actual paper books in their hands. Yeah, instead of an iPad. Or why can't it, something why like can it be that. done electronically? Why yeah. can they check things off from a screen? Why do they have to have handbooks? Uh, because with electronics, the, well, absolutely the reliability yeah. is less than okay. the printed one. That's right. Okay. Things can go wrong yeah. electronically, but you know, hard It's fragile copy. and also maybe something wrong of the power uh, power supply, uh, there maybe could be, uh, uh, there could be else. blackout, blackout yeah. uh, uh, on the way, and also the you know it's just been uh, six uh, six months, and so that's why it's uh, it's more reliable with the uh, original one, and it's a, also a logbook so that they can really keep a record of uh, every tiny details. Uh, mm. that may be shared as uh, really important information for their successors mm. and also for scientific research. Mm. Hard copies are obviously more reliable. As is indicated on our screen, we're about two hours from that liftoff. That's how much time the Taikonauts will remain in their capsule waiting for the liftoff. We now can also hear the voice from the Beijing Flight Control Center um, because you know that uh, the Zhoutian Center, Center is only one system, the launch side system. And uh, the Beijing Flight Control Center actually is in charge of the whole system of systems. Okay. So uh, tell us a little bit more, Professor Yang, about how the Beijing Aerospace Control Center cooperate with the Zhoutian Center. What are their different responsibilities and their um, job delegations? Uh, well, the actually speaking, the uh, the Jiuqian Center, yeah. Yes, the so platform. As I mentioned, opening. the top rotational platform will be first opened mm -hmm. to expose the uh, the emergency escape tower mm. to ensure that it uh, when the side hatch is closed, uh, the emergency escape system can be activated. Mm. Even uh, just uh, two hours before the launch, mm. we can ensure the safety of our astronauts. Mm. And uh, you know that at this moment, the still there are. Uh, ground staff in the launch complex mm. and if anything dangerous happened as i mentioned there is a pipe inside this service tower mm. so they can go down very fast into the underground cabin to protect themselves through the cap through mm. the through the pipe and it's a huge complex and you know uh, uh, some people might imagine it's just uh, you know several uh, uh, stage uh, stacks of rockets so mm. now it's a uh, uh, it's shown as uh, really a huge com complex. It's a huge complex the, standing the, at what Professor Yang said, 15 system. meters? More than, uh, the, the, uh, the height, the total height of the launch vehicle is more than uh, 50 meters. So it, 50 is, uh, meters the launch high. contact is even higher. Yeah. Okay. And you know, that's uh, another very interesting is that, look, this is the launch comp complex mm. and the vehicle assembly building or the v uh, VAB is just uh, two kilometers from it. And uh, today, at this moment, the Shenzhou 18 spacecraft and the uh, Long March 2F Y18 rocket is already standing by in the vehicle assembly building. Mm -hmm. When you say standing by, do they mean that they are they are ready to be transported? Or they uh, they are ready to be conducted an emergency rescue mission. Okay. Now we can see the emergency escape, escape top. Actually speaking, it is composed of several solid rocket motors. Some is to uh, drag the single spaceship from the rocket uh, to a certain distance, and uh, the other smaller ones to control the attitude. Hmm. I mean, how far into this mission, how far into the flight is the escape uh, tower good for? I mean, Beyond the point, I imagine it would be too late for the escape tower to be used. Uh, well, you know, that's the emergency escape. Uh, actually speaking, there are two parts. One is what we mentioned, the emergency escape tower. Uh, the other part is some uh, rocket motors just on the payload fairing. So in different ways, as you asked, you know, that uh, uh, the after, uh, after lift off, uh, and after pitch over of the uh, of the rocket, uh, so uh, the uh, the the first uh, separation will be the jettisoning of the emergency escape tower because in a uh, very high attitude uh, and just after the uh, the the whole spacecraft is already in a, uh, supersonic uh, flight, and so they do not need the uh, emergency escape 
tower any longer, and the asset will be the separation of the boosters. The pitch over happens about 12 seconds into the flight, and uh, the first step usually is about a uh, hundred seconds also, just after lift off. All right, if you're just joining us here on CGTN, we are bringing in to you live coverage of the Shenzhou 17 mission, which will see three Taikonauts launched into China's Tiangong Space Station. We're a little less than an hour, less than two hours from the liftoff, and CGTN's Zheng Yibing is standing by for us at the Beijing Aerospace Control Center, um, the center monitoring the situation closely, obviously. Yibing, good morning to you. What are you seeing at the control center? Well, yes, Zhong Shi, I just saw you talking with uh, Professor Yang Yuguang. He just did share with the insider how this working system at the Beijing and the Aerospace Center is working closely with all other systems. That's like you said, it oversees all working systems for the China Man Space Program. For example, the rocket the spacecraft and the overseeing monitoring system, both at land and sea, and also the launch and landing site in Jiuquan, in northwestern part of China. And this morning, all the working staff here are busy working. We see they actually didn't sleep last night. They got fully prepared for this morning's mission. And they have to set up the status, the parameters of all these systems, for example, the rocket, the spacecraft. And right now, right behind me, we can see on the big screen, there are two photos on the top. It's the Shenzhou 17 three members are inside the re-entry module already and making the final preparation. And at the bottom, we can see the launch pad of the Shenzhou 17 mission. So this is a really great feeling because the last, last, during the last mission in May 30, I was in Zhuquan Satellite Launch Center here. This time, I'm here in the Aerospace Control Center in Beijing. So this feeling makes me really excited. I can see the all working system working Working together. So that's the basic information here. We'll keep you updated during the following programs before the launch mission. Back to you, Zheng Shi. Yibing, we appreciate that update from you. Thank you so much for keeping us posted. For our viewers just joining us here on CGTN, we are bringing to you live coverage of China's Shenzhou 17 mission, which will see three Taikonauts launched into space to China's Tiangong Space Station. Now the three Taikonauts are being seated in the return capsule. They're right, waiting right. for the liftoff, which will happen in less than two hours time. In just a little over one hour, 50 minutes, we'll be watching this process for you here on CGTN. Now a little bit background information in terms of the mission. During the Shenzhou 17 mission, the crew will rotate with the Shenzhou 16 trio. The three-person team will stay in orbit for about six months and return to the ground in April next year. Shenzhou 16 mission members will return on October 30th this year. Since the Shenzhou 17 is the second manned mission of Tiangong's application and development phase, the in-orbit tasks for the three Taikonauts will become more normal and regular. The Shenzhou 17 Taikonauts will perform various in-orbit space science and application payload tests and experiments. They will carry out extravehicular activities, install extravehicular payloads, and conduct space station maintenance and other tasks. Notably, the Shenzhou 17 crew will carry out experimental extravehicular maintenance tasks of the Tiangong Space Station for the first time. A Long March 2F rocket will lift the three Taikonauts off into space at 11.14 a.m. Beijing time, that's 0314 GMT. They will take over from the in-orbit Shenzhou 16 crew and will spend about six months inside China's own space station. Professor Yang, let's talk about something they will do for the first time in terms of um, their tasks once they go into the space station. Um, maintenance, experimental extravehicular maintenance tasks of the Tiangong Space Station. Can you shed light on just how challenging that will be? 
you know that uh, uh, we, let's go back to history. You know, uh, today we've already the human being already have four generation of space stations. The Mir space station be, uh, belongs to the third generation, and the ISS and the China Tiangong space station belongs to the fourth generation. You can see that both the Mir space station and the ISS works much longer than their designed lifespan. So we hope that it is similar to our Tiangong space station. To work much longer than the designed lifespan, we can have more returns in scientific research to benefit the whole human being. So this is what we want. And to do this, you know that the, the basic thing is uh, uh, with a longer uh, operation period, it is more frequently we can see some more function of everything, of some parts of the subsystem of the station. So the repairing and the maintenance will be a very, very important task to not only ensure the designed lifespan, but to extend it and to as long as possible. Uh, so with this purpose, we must test the corresponding technologies for this maintenance. But it is very complex. Uh, you know that there are more, many tasks inside the station, so it will be relatively easier. Uh, but also, many things happen outside the station. So we must prepare for that moment when something wrong happened, as you, we've already discussed, maybe the impact of the space debris. Of course, we've already considered the protection to these space debris. For instance, for those uh, the, the parts and the debris uh, smaller than one, uh, the, with the diameter smaller than one uh, centimeter, uh, we use the shield to protect the station. But uh, this, is, uh, this is depends. You know, that even if we have a shield, and usually it doesn't matter when the uh, space debris hit it, but for some critical core parts, for instance, as we already discussed, the solar panels and some antennas, if the space debris uh, hit on these parts, still there will be very serious malfunction. So we must prepare for everything, any possibility of these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, we must have the measure and also can do it in time to fix it. So this is the point we uh, uh, develop this kind of uh, maintenance. I mean, this is basically unavoidable. Yeah. It's inevitable that you will have some type of impact from um, the space debris. Space debris from um, asteroids, yeah, small yeah, asteroids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it is inevitable yeah. for a very so long period. So this was period. taken into consideration when you designed the yeah, space exactly. station. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. The, uh, actually, uh, you see that uh, if I re remember right, it was the, uh, the Tango was designed for uh, the uh, normal lifespan of 10 years, and uh, now ex it is expandable to another 15 years. And uh, uh, by really the right type of maintenance, it saves the cost and also it makes sure the consistency of data and uh, the continuity of uh, uh, s uh, such sort of uh, uh, the uh, collection and uh, the but exposure is really uh, something that is uh, unavoidable. Uh, it's not only the solar panels, but some of the camera sc uh, screens can also be hit by particles that was not really expected. And so uh, the uh, yes, you have the plan B, but uh, to have the right type of maintenance uh, is something that uh, that is first. Uh, in its own first place, it's also a challenging test uh, to expand our activities uh, beyond the uh, capsule. And uh, it is already a science research by itself. Um, and of course, it also helps to, uh, uh, to uh, really to expand the lifespan and maintain the soundness of such sort of operation. Yes, From professors, it does seem like everything that they can do. Yeah. You can um, see on that not only Mr. Tang Hongbo, but uh, Mr. Uh, Tang Shengjie, the zero two, is also uh, reading the manual very carefully, mm. reading their handbook very carefully. Mm. Uh, so this is a very important preparation uh, for the flight, for the for the ascending phase. Mm. And also, it's very interesting, you know, that uh, according to the previous missions, at this moment, it is quite possible that our Shenzhou 16 crew is also watching the live coverage. Mm. Because, you know, that today we already have our Tianlian data uh, really satellite, we can transfer a very high definition video uh, through the, via these mm. uh, Tianlian data really satellite. Just time, I can still remember that when uh, Miss Liu Yang watched the liftoff of the Shenzhou 15 crew, uh, they also shook their hands. I mean, they are one of a few people that really know what is going on um, on the minds of these Taikonauts. 
I mean, they are. They can relate. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Exactly. They relate oh, no, the best. Look, uh, you you can see this is a camera inside the orbital module. We can see that it seems that the the hatch between the orbital module and the reentry capsule still open. has already closed. Oh, it's closed. Yeah, it's closed. Uh, now we can see also in the middle of the camera, uh, in, in, in of the screen, that uh, we can see another hatch is the the side hatch mm. uh, on on the orbital module. Mm. I mean, also talk to us about the cargo here. You mentioned there's a lot of cargo that we can see with the camera inside the orbital module. What, um, what does the cargo entail here? Some are the resupplies to the station. Uh, as I mentioned, the possibility they have many fresh food prepared for the uh, Shenzhou 16 crew. And also, I believe there are many uh, cargoes are uh, belongs to the uh, scientific research system uh, or the application system. Uh, you know that uh, for any uh, biological study, uh, it is very interesting. Usually we have some live animals, uh, such as the flies and also uh, some live plants. So we must uh, provide a very uh, good condition for, for these kind of samples uh, and uh, to keep it in uh, and to bring it to the station in a very short period because we need a very, uh, seri a very, very serious condition uh, for, for these kind of uh, biological samples. And also, uh, you know, that during the uh, Shenzhou 16 mission, uh, just uh, 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 both in their uh, the ascending phase and also during the uh, Shenzhou 6, uh, Tianzhou 6 uh, mission, it brings many very important uh, biological samples to the station and they conducted their uh, scientific research in the Tianhe Wan module and in the Wen module. So this science, uh, scientific research has already got a very uh, good contribution to the, uh, to, the uh, to the science and also to biolo biological study in China. Uh, so in the future, you know that we've already have some joint experiments uh, be uh, between China and uh, other countries. So sooner or later, we can also see the uh, instruments developed and manufactured by other countries and uh, uh, with the, either this Shenzhou space ship or the Tianzhou cargo ship uh, to be on board the Tianzhou space station and the research, the experiments will be conducted by Chinese astronauts. I mean, China has officially extended invitation to the participation of international foreign exactly. astronauts. So that, you know, we could see that happen relatively soon. We're, we're going to be talking about life uh, timelines later in our yeah. program. But professors, thank you for your analysis so far. I'll be back with you later in our program. And China has also made a series of efforts in its exploration of the broader universe. Scientists also aim to uncover more mysteries about the red planet with a Tianwen-1 mission and pursue the long-held curiosity about life on the moon, as noted in numerous ancient Chinese legends and poems. As the Earth's only natural satellite, China's Chang'e missions seek to bring some clarity to several lunar questions. The country has also spent decades to perfect its space exploration program. Let's now take a closer look at the stories behind China's space ambition. Sounded like in Baghdad. Against the Al Qaeda terrorist tendency.
华山出轨根数及分离点参数发出，景山。景山收到。东风。东风收到。各号注意，我是景山。景山出轨根数及分离点参数已发出，东风。东风收到。华山。华山收到。各号注意，我是东风。各号停，收集第一次综合检查情况。景山。景山明白。华山，华山，明白。零八号，第一次综合检查正常。太原，第一次综合检查正常。渭南，第一次综合检查正常。青岛，第一次综合检查正常。酒泉，第一次综合检查正常。青山，第一次综合检查正常。双城，第一次综合检查正常。五号，第一次综合检查正常。东风，我是华山。我是东风，华山，请讲。华山第一次综合检查正常。东风明白。东风，我是景山。我是东风，景山，请讲。景山，江阴天路及长江六号第一次综合检查正常。东风明白。
，北京东风报告。我是北京东风，请讲。各号注意，我是东风，收集航天员进舱后话音检查准备情况，北京。准备完毕。酒泉。话音检查准备完毕。零号，我是东风。零号到，话音检查准备完毕。零号明白。东风，我是零号，航天员进舱后，换音检查正常。东风明白。北京东风报告。我是北京东风，请讲。各号注意，我是东风，换音检查正常，北京。北京明白。
九权。明白Complex there, and these are live pictures coming from inside the return capsule, where the three Taikonauts have been seated, waiting for liftoff. Liftoff is scheduled at 11:14 a.m. Beijing time, less than one hour, 30 minutes away. We'll be bringing you comprehensive coverage of the Shenzhou 17 mission, including, of course, the liftoff. The three Taikonauts have now been seated in their seats in the return capsule. Last-minute preparation is being done before the liftoff. They're holding handbooks in their hands, checking off items that must be completed before the liftoff. I'm now joined in the studio by Professors Yang Yuguang and Liu Baocheng. Professor Yang, bring us up to speed on what we're watching right now. I mean, the ground staff obviously are still there. They have not evacuated the launch tower. Uh, you 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 can see that just now the ground staff is leaving the orbital module. Mm. So I believe the next step they will close the hatch uh, of the orbital module, and then, you know that's just uh, uh, on the same side of the payload fairing. There are also another hatch.、Mm. Uh, they will also close it, and the seating、uh, have very、uh, good seating on that. So after that, the uh, uh, the Shenzhou spaceship and the uh, uh, The payload fairing of the Long March 2F rocket will be in the final status, and then、uh, the ground staff will leave the launch complex.、Mm. Uh, so、uh, you know that this is also a very important、uh, security procedure、uh, to ensure that all、uh, ground staff, no exceptions, has already、uh, on the on the ground, and they will、uh, leave the launch complex with the、uh, via a ground vehicle.、Mm. Uh, so only after that we can continue our countdown and、uh, to the final moment. You know. At this moment,、uh, you can see the、uh, just、uh, in this、uh, floor of the、uh, launch complex,、uh, we can see that the uh, both the uh, both uh, most of these ground team are from the spaceship system、mm. uh, to uh, check if everything is okay.、Mm. Uh, so the、uh, the team from the astronaut system has already accomplished. Their tasks、mm. to help the astronauts to check their IVA space suits、mm. and to make sure everything is okay, and then they leave.、Mm. Uh, so uh, everything is in a normal preparation, and we can see that、uh, constantly. We can also hear the voice from the commander、uh, and ensure that every system goes okay.、Mm. Uh, it's go for launch. And with this view, we can see the not only the launch complex, but also the VAB, the vehicle assembly building, two kilometers away from the、uh, launch tower.、Mm. But also,、uh, you know that we can.、Uh, th this is a video from the, I believe, the, from、uh, UVA,、uh, UAV, uh, a manned air vehicle.、Mm -hmm. uh, usually during the launch, we have multiple cameras and radar to launch the,、uh, to monitor the status of the, and the,、uh, especially the trajectory. Of the launch vehicle, if it goes okay,、mm. uh, so uh, every system must work in very uh, in uh, very uh, normal uh, status, and、uh, you know that as、uh, Mr. Chen Yibin has already mentioned, the re,、uh, the launch side system. Is also standing by at this moment because you know that the, the rescue team belongs to the landing side system,、Got、and、uh, during the ascending phase of the launch vehicle, if anything wrong happened, they they conducted an emergency escape. The、uh, rescue team will find our、uh, astronaut as soon as possible.、Mm. But of course, on the other hand. Our astronauts must have their ability to survive in wild field,、mm. uh, so this is also very necessary. Still, you can see that,、uh, as you mentioned, that on the right side of is the camera.、Uh, the video comes from the camera inside the、uh, reentry capsule. All three astronauts already、uh, see there, already fastened their. Uh, uh, safe belt. I believe that just、uh, several minutes before the launch, they will close the face mask of、mm. their helmet. 
Uh, mm. And uh, they will have the protection of their IVS based suit uh, for their, uh, if any leakage happened to the cabin, mm. uh, they will have their IVS based suit to protect them still in the pressurized environment. Mm. You know, as seen from the video on the left side of this video, uh, you can see that the launch complex, the rotational platform is still, most of them are closed. Mm. Only the top one is open, mm. uh, and the emergency uh, escape system, I believe, is, at this moment, is already activated uh, so uh, the next step I think that uh, at this moment all the uh, propellant tanks are, has already been been filled mm. uh, with the uh, uh, UDMH or uh, unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine uh, mm. as the fuel and also NTO uh, nitrogen tetraoxide as the uh, oxidizer so mm. all the because this is a, a hypergolic propulsion system in room temperature mm. uh, and all these propellants has already been filled to the launch vehicle very properly and then uh, also there are routinely checking uh, and confirmation of everything uh, and then we go for launch i mean thanks to the abundance of cameras we are able to see the launch mission from different angles including after the liftoff we're going to be able to see the trajectory of the flight from cameras mounted onto uh, the rocket. Yes, there. You know, that's uh, every time we have a camera mounted on the second stage, mm. on the second stage of the rocket, looking backwards, uh, so we can see that uh, we can uh, from that camera we can see uh, two of the boot, uh, of the four boosters, mm. uh, and uh, also we have cameras mounted inside this uh, payload fairing to monitoring the status of the Shenzhou spaceship. And uh, with this camera, we can see the separation between the second stage and the uh, uh, and the Shenzhou space. If the only when the separation is conducted, we can see that this is a, this is a successful launch. Mm. And Professor Liu, uh, can I get your take on the impression of the lineup of the Taikonauts this time? It's the same combination of a new of, of a new of Three. two new astronauts and one veteran. In this case. Mr. Tang Hongbo is the veteran here. He set a record of the shortest interval between manned flights. Um, his first flight was back in 2021 with the Shenzhou yes. 12 mission. Mm -hmm. This is his second flight. Also, he'll be the first one to return to China's Tiangong Space Station. So he's a legend already. Let's just put it that way. Yes. I think uh, one shows that uh, there's the uh, successive uh, uh, passage of knowledge and skills uh, uh, by combining the uh, previous batch of the astronaut as the leader uh, with the uh, young astronauts. And so this is really a strategic arrangement. And second, uh, they are uh, the youngest uh, uh, on the average age, so it shows that uh, the uh, Chinese astronauts are, are really uh, there to be uh, uh, to be getting younger, and a young, uh, younger generations are getting more and more up to speed. And third is that uh, uh, the combination of their knowledge. They are not really doing uh, very hefty scientific research in the uh, station, but they are. Uh, they have to have all the knowledge and sensitivity to observe and also collect. Uh, all the information and keep a very clear uh, orderly record and, uh, for the research on the ground. And uh, so this is uh, uh, something that's uh, uh, very much uh, the encouraging. And uh, then, of course, their health conditions uh, are really uh, superbly uh, drilled and uh, very well uh, prepared. And the past experience of the previous crews uh, do also give not only their knowledge but also more of the confidence mm. uh, in handling uh, their own house and their uh, living environment and together with their uh, professional activities mm. that is there to be conducted. Professors, stay with me here on our program. I'll be back with you in a short moment. The Tianwen-1 is China's first Mars mission launched back in 2020 and CGTN's Yang Zhao explains how the orbiter completed its mission. Mars has become a graveyard for robots. More than half of the 47 missions so far have ended in failures of various kinds. But we humans just love throwing robots in Mars. There have been one or two missions every couple of years for the past two decades. But this month alone, there have been three separate missions. 
Tianwen Wan from China, perseverance from the U.S., and the hope from the UAE. So what's going on out there? Well, the launching window in July offers a great saving on fuel. Like airlines, space agencies want to find the shortest route to Mars. But it's not when the two planets are at their closest, as you might think. The solar system is constantly shifting. Every time Mars completes a single orbit, Earth goes around the sun almost twice. That makes space travel far more complicated than a straight line on Earth. Actually, if you launch when two planets are at their closest distance, a point known as Mars opposition, your robots may never get to Mars. Instead, scientists will patiently wait for a time when Mars has a head start. Then they will not aim the spacecraft towards where the Mars is at a launch time, because by the time you get there, the Mars will have already moved right here. Instead, they need to point it somewhere ahead. And where Mars is going to be when you This orbit has been called the Hongmen Transfer Orbit, which was first proposed in 1925. Everything needs to be calculated carefully because this launch window happens for just a few weeks every 26 months. Now the window is open, and missing it means two more years of waiting. Well, transfer orbit will take Tianwen seven months to travel hundreds of millions of kilometers. Choosing a shorter way would ironically require more fuel. The best things about this orbit is that theoretically, the propulsion system just needs to kick in twice during the trip to get off Earth at the beginning and catch up Mars when it's approaches. And you should barely use fuel in between. What is getting a bit more closer at about 400 kilometers away from Mars, it needs to slow down in time so it can be captured by the planet's gravity and become a satellite of it, or it may miss Mars forever. And more than one hour remains until the Shenzhou 17 spacecraft's blast off as the staff and the three Taikonauts are making their final checkups. But for now, let's turn things over to my colleague Ho Na with a quick roundup of the latest world stories we're following for you this hour. Ho Na, Hello there, Zhong Shi, and welcome to the world today. Now, now, let's take a look at the news making headlines around the world.
，更好注意收集两小时准备情况。零号，两小时准备完毕。太原，两小时准备完毕。渭南，两小时准备完毕。青岛，两小时准备完毕。酒泉，两小时准备完毕。青山，两小时准备完毕。双城，两小时准备完毕。五号。两小时准备完毕。天仓，两小时准备完毕。The, the really the primary elements of learning how to live and work in outer space. It's wonderful to see that new focus uh, from all these nations, you know, from uh, particularly some of the largest uh, populations on Earth focused on space. See, we have seen uh, the growth of China in space sector. It's really tremendous. I think you are giving a lot of push to create the required infrastructure uh, in terms of technology capability, in terms of building new systems and uh, launching new missions. I think this shows your directions are very you know, forward-looking and I'm very appreciative of that part of the work that you are doing. Uh, and it is also goes with the, the, the long-term vision that you have created for the space sector. Why not? This is also a possibility, uh, but uh, sending an astronaut is a possibility. But before that, we can give some experiments to be uh, realized, to be done in uh, the Tiangong uh, space station. Uh, and because in ISS we will hold 13 experiments, our astronauts, but that's not all. We have many, many more. So uh, when we find the opportunity, why not? We can also do it in, uh, uh, together with CNSA uh, in the space station. Three taikonauts embark on a new journey to China's space station aboard Shenzhou 17. 20 years after the first Chinese man took a historic step. China aims to rapidly advance its capabilities into space. Join us on CDTN for China's flight mission to explore the space and beyond.
，明白。太原宫，明白。贵州，明白。青岛，五光，明白。九泉，明白。青山，明白。双城，明白。五号，明白。天仓，明白。各号注意，我是东风。第二次综合检查，五分钟准备，景山。景山明白。华山。华山明白。零八号。明白。太原。明白。渭南。明白。青岛。明白。酒泉。明白。青山。明白。双城。明白。五号。明白。东风，我是华山。我是东风，华山，请讲。华山第二次综合检查，五分钟准备完毕。东风明白。东风，我是景山。我是东风，景山，请讲。景山，江阴天路及长江六号第二次综合检查，五分钟准备完毕。东风明白。各号注意，收集五分钟，准备情况。零八号，五分钟准备完毕。太原，五分钟准备完毕。渭南，五分钟准备完毕。青岛，五分钟准备完毕。酒泉，五分钟准备完毕。青山，五分钟准备完毕。双城，五分钟准备完毕。五号，五分钟准备完毕。各号注意，我是东风，第二次综合检查
一分钟准备，五十秒。四十秒，三十秒，二十秒，十、九、八。七、六、五、四、三、二、一，起飞！七零，幺动时幺九分五九秒，拐幺动毫秒。七零，幺动时幺九分五九秒，拐幺动毫秒。各号注意，我是东风。各号停，收集第二次综合检查情况。景山，景山明白。华山，华山明白。零八号，第二次综合检查正常。太原，第二次综合检查正常。渭南，第二次综合检查正常。青岛，第二次综合检查正常。酒泉，第二次综合检查正常。青山，第二次综合检查正常。双城，第二次综合检查正常。五号，第二次综合检查正常。东风，我是景山。我是东风，景山，请讲。景山，江阴天路长江六号，第二次综合检查正常。东风明白。东风，我是华山。我是东风，华山，请讲。华山第二次综合检查正常，东风明白
北京景山报告，我是北京景山，请讲。景山报告测量船当前海况及一小时准备情况。长江六号海况四级，浪高一点五米，风力四级，能见度十五公里。景山天路长江六号一小时准备完毕。景山报告完毕。北京明白。我是北京江阴，请讲。北京明白。北京华山报告。我是北京华山，请讲。华山一小时准备完毕，报告完毕。北京明白。我是北京曙光，请讲。北京明白。我是北京长城，请讲。北京明白。我是北京天宫，请讲。北京明白。我是北京银河，请讲。北京明白。我是北京天舟，请讲。北京明白
各号注意，收集一小时准备情况。零号，一小时准备完毕。太原，一小时准备完毕。渭南，一小时准备完毕。青岛，一小时准备完毕。酒泉，一小时准备完毕。青山，一小时准备完毕。双城。一小时准备完毕。五号 ，Actually speaking， 一小时准备完毕。Uh, less than one hour, 一小时准备完毕。Uh, launch, but you know that the what it mentioned, the voice mentioned the one hour preparation uh, is uh, uh, is a portion that uh, lasts uh, for several minutes. So uh, the uh, commander zero must confirm that the one hour preparation has already been done for all these systems. There should be no uh, exception and go for launch. Mm. And you see, uh, as we've already mentioned, that the, uh, the rotational uh, platforms will be open one by one because just before that we have to uh, conduct uh, all kinds of checking and also as we mentioned the preparation work for the astronaut system and for the uh, Shenzhou space sh uh, ship system. So. The opening, uh, the, uh, the rotational platforms uh, forms a uh, closed volume and give a very good protection uh, to the uh, combination of the rocket and the single spaceship. Yeah, I mean, let's talk a little bit more about the rocket. The Long March 2F rocket has proved to be a reliable one yeah. for the manned missions. Um, how has the Long March series developed over the years to reach a reliable model? that can be used consistently for China's current and future manned flights. Well, this is very interesting. Uh, in the uh, previous videos, we already uh, mentioned about the commercial space activities. Mm. You see that this is also related to commercial space activity. You know that China entered the international commercial launch, market, launch service market in uh, 1960, uh, 1980s, uh, while the first uh, commercial launch is in 1990, the launch of the Asia Satellite One. Uh, which was built by Hughes Company in U.S. Uh, accuracy in uh, Hughes 376 model. Uh, the satellite is called uh, Asia Satellite One uh, by the launch of the uh, Long March 3 uh, launch vehicle. But honestly speaking, at that moment, the capability of China's launch vehicle cannot meet the requirement of most uh, satellites in the international market. Mm. So China developed another much more powerful launch vehicle called Long March 2E with four boosters added to the, uh, the core stage. And with this Long March 2E, you know, that's the capability is 8.8 .8 times to low Earth orbit. So it's already big enough to launch a spaceship in orbit. So that made a good foundation for the China's manned space program. You know, also, you know, that uh, in 1990s, uh, uh, in the year 1992, uh, with the establishment of the uh, formerly uh, the, the, the setup of China's manned space program, we have a, another derivative of this Long March 2E, the Long March 2F. Uh, the Long March 2E and the Long March 2F both are two and a half stage rockets. Uh, with the uh, core stage have two stages, the first stage and second stage, and the four boosters. Mm. But the difference is that uh, we have a malfunction detection system on board the Long March 2F. Mm. So the reliability of the Long March 2F is much higher than the Long March 2E. It can reach to uh, 0 0.97, which means that uh, for any, uh, for 100 launches, only three of them may have some malfunction. Mm. But still this, you know, that this is still not safe enough for astronauts. So we added another important system called the emergency escape, escape system. Mm. So with this system, the safety to the astronauts can reach to 0 0.997 which means that for a thousand launches, only three of them will threaten the safety of the astronauts. Uh, so this is the difference between the Long March 2F but, and the Long March uh, 2E. But both these two launch vehicles utilize the, what I have already mentioned, the hypergolic propulsion system, which use the uh, propellants with room ten temperature, which is more convenient for usage, uh, but with low energy compared with the new generation. Mm. Uh, but it is already very practical with the UDMH and the NTO as a propellants. Mm. So uh, the first stage have four uh, engines and uh, the four boosters each have one engine. The, each engine has a thrust of about uh, 75 tons. So mm. the total liftoff thrust is 60, uh, 600 tons. And the total mass of the, uh, the liftoff mass of the, uh, the launch vehicle is more than 500 tons. Okay, T minus yes, 30 minutes. T minus 30 minutes. We are 30 minutes away from the liftoff. 
I mean, Professor, you've been comparing the Long Watch 2F with 2E, other models in the same series. I mean, countries that are capable of rocket science use their own rockets, the United States, India. How does the Long March 2F compare with, for example, Falcon and the rockets that India uses? Uh, well, the, uh, the capability of the Long March 2F uh, is, has the lower capability uh, than and the Falcon 9, uh, but the Long March 5B launch vehicle, the capability is greater than the Falcon 9 uh, currently used by the uh, SpaceX. Uh, so, but you know that uh, of course the Falcon 9 is is a human rated launch vehicle. It can launch the uh, crewed Dragon spaceship. So, uh, from the view of human rated launch vehicle, uh, it is uh, it is bigger uh, uh, and uh, have greater capability than the Long March uh, 2F launch vehicle. But you know, until now the uh, India do not have a human rated launch vehicle because uh, all their tests uh, are unmanned. They will plan their first maiden flight of their future uh, manned spaceship, uh, Gagayan, uh, maybe uh, within this year or the next year. Uh, so they must conduct, uh, as uh, formally announced by my colleague in International Astronautical Federation, the chairman of the ISRO, uh, Mr. Dr. Samanas. Uh, so they will first conduct maybe uh, three to four unmanned flights of the Gagayan uh, manned spaceship and then conduct uh, the first uh, crewed mission. And in the future, they also have a plan to have their own space station and the human missions to the moon. Is the Long March uh, rocket series still developing, still evolving? What more functions, how much more reliability and capabilities can we expect to be developed along the Long March series? Uh, before answer this question, let's look, his, uh, look at the, the, the video. We can see that this is also a camera. Uh, this is a video from a camera mounted on the uh, rotational platforms. Mm. So you can see that the distance is increasing mm. uh, uh, to, uh, with the launch vehicle. And as I mentioned, you can see that in the, the yellow ones, you can see the, uh, some small arms still attached to the launch vehicle because we still have pipes and the cables connected to the launch vehicle. Uh, with these uh, small arms. Uh, and so uh, finally, the, the, all the platform will be opened. So let's continue our discussion. As you asked, uh, yes, of course, although you know that Long March 2F is the only uh, human rated launch vehicle of China, but still we are now developing the new versions. Mm -hmm. You see that uh, the, according to Mr. Zhang Hailian, the deputy chief designer of China Manned Space Program, uh, during the forum just in uh, July this year, he introduced the detailed plan of China's human missions to the moon. And during this mission, the major role will come from the Long March 10 launch vehicle. It is a heavy launch vehicle in China. The capability is 27 times to the uh, lunar transfer orbit. You know that, uh, as we discussed, the most powerful launch vehicle of China is now is Long March 5. And the capability of Long March F is about 8.3 times to uh, lunar mm. transfer orbit, which means that it can bring an object about 8.3 times to go to the moon. But you know, of course, it is not big enough to uh, conducting uh, manned missions to the moon. So in the future, we will have the Long March 10 launch vehicle, which can bring our astronauts through the new generation manned spaceship uh, to the translunar orbit uh, mm. for the moon missions. And you know, we'll, we will use two launches, uh, one to launch the lunar lander, a manned lunar lander, but in a manned status to the circumlunar orbit, and it will wait there. And then the second launch will have our three crew members on board our new generation spaceships with the Long March 10 launch vehicle uh, also to the trans lunar transfer orbit. And the two spacecraft, the uh, new gen generation spaceship and the lunar lander will rendezvous and dock in the lunar orbit mm. and then conduct the landing on the moon. Mm. In terms of the rendezvous and docking today, I mean, after six and a half hours into the flight, um, the mission will conduct a fast automated rendezvous and docking exactly. with the front port of the Tianhe core module and forming a three spacecraft, three module 
assembly. Exactly. Uh, you see, that's uh, for any spacecraft, uh, the launch uh, to chasing and rendezvous docking with another sp spacecraft, especially in the low Earth about orbit, the basic and the most important requirement that the when the second spacecraft come into the orbit, it must be in the same orbital plane of the first one. Mm. So this is a uh, uh, most important requirement because you know that uh, the low Earth orbit, the spacecraft with, with uh, in the low Earth orbit has a very high velocity, 7.8 kilometers per second. So even a very slight error uh, in the orbital plane between the two vehicles uh, may cause the uh, they will lose the chance for uh, rendezvous in the dock. So they must be in the same orbital plane. But on the other hand, you see that the orbital plane of the our station is relatively stable uh, in the universe. Uh, so uh, we can only launch our Shenzhou spaceship when the launch site, the launch complex, rotating together with the Earth, when it rotated to the position just uh, almost in the same orbital plane of the Tiangong Space Station. Mm. Uh, so that is the reason why we read this zero launch window. Uh, so it is very narrow and very strict. Mm. Uh, so this also raises a very high requirement to the reliability and robustness of our launch vehicle and the Shenzhou spaceship. Because mm. We must check everything. If anything wrong happened, we must stop it, stop the procedure, and maybe the launch window today will be abandoned. So we, meet, we will list at least one day. And as you mentioned, today we choose the fast rendezvous and docking. It raises an even higher requirement to the launch itself because not only uh, it requires the two spacecraft to be in the same outer plane, but also their position in this orbital plane have some requirement to uh, meet the requirement for the fast rendezvous uh, for six and a half hour. Usually, you know that uh, uh, for this first uh, this kind of mission in 2011, we used two days. Uh, so this is also an even more uh, strict requirement. And you know that our Tianzhou spaceship also make a world record to using less than two hours uh, from launch to rendezvous and dock with the Tiangong Space Station. Mm. Uh, but for the manned, uh, manned uh, spaceship, uh, we keep a good balance between the uh, uh, how fast it is and mm. how reliable it is. Mm. So six hours is already very, very comfortable for astronauts. Mm. You may experience that uh, every day you transfer, uh, you drive your car. Uh, of, of course, you, you, you stay as short as possible in mm. your car. Uh, between mm. the transfer because it is too narrow in the car. Of course, if you stay in the room, it will be much more comfortable. You can recognize our Shenzhou Space Station as a room mm. and uh, the Shenzhou spaceship as a car. Mm. Uh, so uh, this shorter period, uh, stay in the Shenzhou spaceship, they'll be more comfortable. Absolutely. It's, it's a remarkable commute to an office room, to you know, a living quarters, uh, whichever way you put it. And if you're watching our special program today on CGTN, uh, through CGTN live streaming on our social media platforms, we value your feedback also. Feel free to leave your questions. We'll put some of these questions to my guests here in the studio, Professor Yang Yiguang and Professor Liu Baochou. They will be more than happy to take your questions. And we encourage you to do that as you stay with us on our special coverage of the Shenzhou 17 mission. We are now about 21 minutes away from the liftoff, these light pictures from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center show a quiet, serene um, scene there at the launch complex. The rotating platforms have all, opened. All, all, you can see that at this moment, all the uh, rotational platforms has already opened. Mm. Uh, I believe that at this moment, uh, the ground team has already uh, at least uh, withdrawn from the service tower. Mm. And maybe not uh, all withdrawn from the launch compact, but uh, absolutely they will already left the, the, the service tower. Mm. Uh, but as I mentioned, still at this moment, there are several, uh, several uh, small arms in brown color, which still attached to the launch vehicle. Uh, to give electricity, uh, the, uh, the uh, gases, and also the other su supplies. Also, you know that there are air conditioners inside our payload ferry to give a very comfortable condition for our Shenzhou spaceship. Mm. And the t three Taikonauts seem ready and relatively comfortable given the condition in their seats, um, holding handbooks. Yeah, you may notice the packages between the, the luggage between the different between the different the astronauts. Mm. Uh, you know that there is a very interesting requirement: the position of the center of the mass 
of the venture capital is very, very strict. Mm. Uh, this will influence, especially, you know, that during the re-entry, it will influence the safety of the astronaut and also the position where they can land. Mm. So this, uh, you know, that's the, the different people have a different weight. Uh, so the, even the slight difference between the weight of different astronauts must be considered. And they could, could they gain and lose weight during that six months? I mean, that's uh, You know, that's that's, there is the standard criteria. I mean, so they, they measure, I, I, I assume they weigh themselves on a regular basis just to make sure, you know, the health element, to make sure, you know, their health is in check. But what if they gain weight or lose some weight during this that six months stay? This is also part of the research. I think, uh, yeah, just, just exactly. The, yeah. So the, uh, because but, of biological research for human tolerance, and a uh, uh, human impact is yeah, also yeah, yeah. part of the research. But of course, the most important is the upper limit. They should not exceed that. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I don't think anybody has, has ever exceeded that limit, right? Yeah. Considering how regularly, how often they check their weight and their health status up there in the Tiangong Space Station. And you can see the beautiful view of our Jiuqian uh, Satellite Ground Center the forest in brown color at this very beautiful season. Mm. And now as we await the launch of Shenzhou 17, let's once again check in with City Team reporter Sun Ye, who joins us from the launch site. Sun Ye, we are um, minutes away from that 15 minute countdown, oh, yeah. a crucial countdown to lift off. What's the latest on the ground? Yeah. Well, um, the commander here hasn't called out that 50 minutes um, countdown yet, but this is the moment, uh, the minus 15 uh, minutes, oh, he's calling it now. This is the command that uh, he will be calling out the last cars, the last people near or under the launch tower to evacuate, and the last five of cars could be in our view to leave the launch tower. And as it gets near the launch launch hour. Uh, we've been talking to um, rocket designers and they say even though they've seen it so many times, this hour it's still intense. And for us, we've been hearing uh, we are ready. Uh, everything is normal throughout the morning and we've learned that all the system from rocket spaceship, they are safe and reliable. This is still a moment quite intense um, for people who are working here and we imagine it could be more so for the Taikonauts. And we have one small trick from none other than Yang Liwei, the first Taikonaut in space. He said to deal with that kind of anxiety, there was a small trick. He said you could try putting your tongue in your cheek like this, but probably don't show it. That would take the uh, your focus off everything else and take the anxiety level down. But perhaps the Taikonauts today, the Shenzhou 17 crew, they don't need that. Yesterday we heard uh, Tang Hongbo, the commander, said he's very calm because he only has his mind on one thing, on getting the mission accomplished. And that's what we're here. Uh, go we are here to witness now, um, to see them, to see the lift off, lift off, and to see the mission gets accomplished. Zhong Shi. Well, just so you know, I did try out that trick just now when we were showing the pictures, and I was not on the screen. And I don't know, maybe it'll did help. It I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's a it, it's trick from China's first Taikonaut. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta try it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sun Ye, for that update. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And we continue our studio discussions here and conversations until the liftoff happens in just about 15, a little over 15 minutes time. That liftoff scheduled at 11.14 a.m. Beijing time. Professor, can we talk about that window for liftoff? Because we've had a lot of manned and unmanned um, launches mm -hmm. and each liftoff time is very different. Some yeah. in the middle of the night and today in early, in well, morning, not exactly early morning. How is that window decided? I mean, what are the parameters and elements that need to be taken into consideration? Weather, for example, is one of them? Uh, weather is very important consideration, especially the speed of the wind will be uh, considered either the, uh, in the low attitude and in the high attitude. Moreover, you see that we've already, you already mentioned about the launch window in different time is quite different. Some in the night, some in the morning. Uh, this is because you know that the, the, the change of the orbital plane of the, uh, 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 of, of the Tiangong Space Station uh, is relatively slow comparing with the, uh, with the Earth, but still it's changing. So every time it's in a different position. 
And uh, we've already mentioned that the basic requirement is that uh, after the launch of the Shenzhou spaceship, it must be in the same orbital plane of the Tiangong space station. So uh, we, in different seasons. Okay, T minus 15 minutes and counting. Mm. Yeah, this is really to synchronize the, uh, the, the uh, universe in which the uh, space shuttle is uh, 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 placed in order to synchronize uh, everything that is uh, precisely uh, to be made for uh, get connected. I mean, just at the Jutian satellite on Century, we have the collaboration of three systems, the astronauts, the space um, craft, and the other one being the uh, Luffy code, the launch vehicle systems. They have to cooperate and collaborate closely, and then we have the Beijing Aerospace Control Center, we have the um, ground stations, mm -hmm. the monitoring stations, the monitoring ships. You have to coordinate between all of these systems to make sure that everyone is on board, everyone is on the same page for the liftoff. And that is um, how all of these real-time coordination happens, why this real-time coordination happens. Yeah. And you can see from this video, uh, the, the previous video is come from uh, uh, Amanda Air Vico and UAV uh, the, the, the near the launch, launch com complex. So today, the UAV is widely used, used to monitor the whole situation. Mm. Uh, so it's very con convenient for usage. But don't they pose risks to, 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 the, to the launch? I mean, they... Mm, not... Mm, uh, they're, of, of, of course, course not. They're, of course, very low altitude. Yeah, yeah. But then they're around... And also, it's uh, far from the trajectory of the uh, launch vehicle. Okay. So you can see that the ground team is withdrawing from the retrieving from the launch complex. Mm. So the the last groups of ground staff, what's so the, those what people, remains of the ground staff right uh, now? The ground staff uh, is just uh, just uh, just in uh, previously work on the launch complex. So you know that the, the the person in charge of will count if the number is correct. So if the number is not correct, then there must be someone remained on the launch complex. So the, the, even the, in the most serious place, mm. uh, situation, they will stop the launch mm. process. Let's check out some of the comments left um, by our social media users. They've been watching our special coverage here on CGTN, and they, I believe, have some questions. And let's check out some of these questions. We have a lot of comments flooding in. I don't know if we have time to review all of them. But let's uh, take a look at some of them. Um, for example, what happens to the human body if someone spends two years in near zero gravity, like on the moon or Mars, Professor Young? Okay, this is a good question. Nobody you has ever attempted that. I mean, even with space stations, you rotate every few months. You know, that's the, uh, the, the, the record today for a single flight in microgravity field is achieved by uh, Mr. Polyakov, just passed away uh, in recent years. Uh, but his record is uh, 437 days in mm. orbit. So this is the highest record made in the Mir space station. Mm. So also there are uh, several crew have already conducted the residence in uh, International Space Station for more than one year. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, actually speaking, human, the human being has already conducted these kind of studies. Absolutely, the influence of microgravity and also together with the radiation have a remarkable influence to the people's healthy. Uh, especially, you know, that's... In what ways? In, in many ways. Uh, you know, that's uh, the weakening of our neural system and our muscles, the loss of the bones, the loss of the calcium, and also the psychological problems. All these are very serious problems. So, we must have the certain countermeasure to dealing with these kind of negative influences. Mm. Now let's also take a look at the, this other one. How do the people breathe in the craft, in the spacecraft, and in the space station? How do they breathe? Uh, there's o there's ox oxygen in the spacecraft and on the space station. Uh, usually, you know, that uh, in our space station, the commander they were announcing, announcing the final uh, ignition time. Time um, mm -hmm. set at 11, 13, 59 seconds. That's the preci precise time when the ignition will happen. This is very interesting. You know that we China adopted a quite different system from other countries. What we mentioned is the ignition time, 
mm. and the other countries, in, uh, for instance, US, use the lift off time. Mm. So this is different. There is a several second interview between these. So you may always re notice that uh, Mr. Zhong Shi already uh, hosted so many uh, launch live coverage. You may heard the voice just after the lift off, uh, and uh, one of the uh, ground staff will report the actual lift off time. Mm. Uh, because you know that as the uh, as the commander, the chief commander has already mentioned, they announced the ignition time, mm. and there will be same several seconds interval uh, for the lift off time. So another person will announce this uh, lift off time just after the launch. Mm. And for the question, you know that uh, we China adopted a mixed atmosphere on board the Tiangong space station, which means twenty percent of oxygen and eighty percent of nitrogen. Uh, mm. is quite similar, but very close to our uh, ground. So we'll, uh, the astronauts will be very convenient inside the station. But you know that uh, in the EVA, it will be quite different. Uh, mm. You know that uh, the, uh, the, the, more, the higher pressure is, the, uh, the more rigid the space suit is. Mm. So if the, uh, the difference between the inside and outside the EVA space suit is one atmosphere, <laughs> it will be very, very rigid, and it, it will be impossible for the astronauts to move and mm. uh, change, uh, change the uh, shape of their bodies. So uh, there is no ex exception that all space capable nations choose the pure oxygen atmosphere inside mm. their EVA space suit. So before that, we must have some adaptation procedure for the astronauts mm. uh, uh, from, the, uh, from their common uh, daily life in our uh, station to the EVA, uh, because they will change from the mixed atmosphere to the pure oxygen. Uh, atmosphere and in the pure oxygen mass atmosphere, the inner pressure in the e EVA space field is only 30 to 40 percent of the common atmosphere. So uh, for this change, uh, we have a very critical pr procedure to remove all the nitrogen inside our body mm. because it will boiling uh, uh, if we change that very fast. That mm -hmm. will be very very dangerous. Mm. And I, I guess we have time for a couple more. A viewer named Azul Celeste asks about the measures to deal with debris and pollution in this space. We covered this in our earlier discussions. I mean, um, there has been minor damage, very minor damage to the solar wings of uh, the Tiangong Space Station. And part of the tasks for Shenzhou 17 is that they will inspect some of that damage, not exactly to the point where they have to repair or fix that, but they will definitely take a look. Yeah. But what happens if that damage is a little bit um, more extensive let's say let's in in, in a you know hypothesis situation uh you know that uh, in the orbit uh, for the space of the debris uh, there are um, hundreds of uh, millions of debris uh, with a size less than one centimeter so uh, for this kind of debris is very difficult to track for tracking because it's too small so we use the shield to protect the uh, space station but for bigger ones, for instance, for those uh, larger than one, uh, larger, larger, larger than ten centimeter, uh, usually if it collide with the station, there will be cause very serious damage. So for these bigger uh, space debris, usually we will conduct an orbit maneuver to avoid the possible collision with this uh, space debris. But if something wrong already happened, that will be depend. For instance, if one of our module uh, is hit by the uh, by the by the spirit ray, and some leakage happened. These kind of things already happened uh, in the Mir space station before. Uh, so uh, even we will shut down the whole module and uh, isolate it from the other modules. So mm. these things do happen in the Mir space station before. Uh, and uh, this is the most uh, serious uh, serious uh, problem. And uh, even uh, in this case, may. We, you, we may require the astronaut to have an emergency escape from the station to go back to the Earth. I mean, let's, let's give time for one last question. Chris Lemba Lemba wants to know why they are called the Taikonauts. Why Chinese astronauts are called Taikonauts? I mean, don't Russian astronauts get their name also? Of course, this comes from the culture. You see that uh, usually in America, they call them uh, astronauts. But in uh, Russia and the former Soviet Union, they were called cosmonauts. 
So, of course, in China, we have our own traditional, uh, in Chinese name, is Taiko Nas, uh, mm. because the universe in different countries have different uh, pronunciations. Mm. Uh, in, the, uh, in the United States, is the uh, Astro, uh, and uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Russia, is Cosmos. Uh, mm. Well, in China, it's Taikong. Mm. Uh, yeah. Taikong that... is, the, is the outer space, yeah. mm. uh, literally. So I think this is really also a contribution to the English dictionary or uh, foreign language dictionary at large. No, mm. with the Taikonos. Yes, yeah. I think they have they have Taikonos as, as a word in, in the dictionary. Yeah, sorry. Mm. Let's hear from the commander. Okay, T minus five minutes. Mm. Mm. T minus five minutes. We're five minutes away from the ignition. Um, Professor Liu, I do want to bring you here and talk a little bit about international cooperation because China has invited astronauts from all over the world to cooperate and participate in its future space station missions, of course, through a selection process. I mean, what does that say about China's commitment for its manned space program to be open, to be cooperative, and to be inviting um, where all of its fruits, if you will, all of its achievements will be shared with the international community? Professor Liu. Well, uh, first, China uh, does really agree with the first treaty of the United Nations that we are not really claiming territorial uh, space in the uh, outer uh, the universe. And uh, that has really uh, received popularity uh, on the uh, value-based one. And uh, uh, of course, uh, technically, because Chinese uh, space is uh, getting more reliable, and uh, we, uh, we can also see through generations of improvements. And uh, we are really talking about the uh, uh, three bedroom and two sitting rooms of apartment in the outer space, so that can really accommodate the uh, uh, scientific uh, research uh, in a more uh, the uh, comfortable fashion. And the other is that uh, the uh, China provides the uh, more of the uh, open attitude uh, to have more inclusivity and to support uh, the uh, by policy particularly the developing countries also to participate, and we are also are ready to share the data uh, for scientific use, etc. So uh, this is uh, uh, really the attractiveness of the uh, Chinese for more of the scientific engagement, not only in the space, but also on the ground. Well, if you're watching us through our social media platforms, keep those questions and comments coming. When we have time, we will Put your question to my studio guests here. We're two minutes away from ignition. Very quickly, Professor Yang, John Titter asked a simple question. Can we see Earth from a geostationary orbit in the visible spectrum? Uh, theoretically speaking, yes. But you know that there is no any geostationary uh, geo geo orbit manned missions uh, before and today because it's not necessary. You see that to send a human onto the geostationary orbit, the energy required is also almost equal to that to a human lunar mission. So that will use a very huge launch vehicle, but it's really not necessary. How, why, why to do that? That's, there is no reason to do this. I mean, it's an imaginary question. That's, that's part of why we have space programs. They really broaden people's horizons and open their eyes to a bigger world. We are just over Oh, there are some minute. audience for the launch. Absolutely, to the ignition time. Everyone is watching with breath that is baited, including mm -hmm. all, three of he all three of us here in the studio. Uh, you may notice that the, the service arms are still attached to the uh, launch vehicle. So after we change the power supply from the ground to the internal batteries, we will detach the rota uh, rotational arms. Mm. And also we mount some cameras on these arms. We can also monitor the whole procedure to ensure safety. Actually speaking, this belongs to the uh, launch side system. And before this launch, all these things must be operated to check whether if everything, uh, for instance, the motors for the rotating is okay. T minus one minute. 
Do you think the Shenzhou six? Well, you mentioned the Shenzhou sixteen crew could be watching all yes. of this yes. in the space video station. Video uploaded to the uh, from the VR. The but they're not able to talk to them, right? They're not be able to give them a you know a, a, just a pep talk to encourage them or anything like that. That depends on what they will send to them. Okay. Now already launched all the detachment all of right. the arms. Okay. The arms are detached. Yeah. Oh, you can see thirty seconds in the station. They are watching. Well, we just saw some, you know, some batteries. Well done. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. Professor Liu is getting nervous. I can't feel that. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Over the past two decades since China sent its first Taikanot, this is the twelfth mission carrying the youngest ever Shenzhou crew since the construction of China's Station. So this is the comes from the camera of the mission mounted on the second stage of the rocket and looking backwards, so we can see the two boosters. These cameras are so important; they bring us a real time. Scenario, real-time monitoring of what is going on with the rocket to see its trajectory, and to really visualize how that yeah, flight yeah, is yeah. going. I think it's super so important. So I believe at this moment you can see the direction has already yeah, changed. Yeah. So the That's pitch right. over has already been successfully conducted, and the next critical step will be the jettisoning of the uh, emergency escape tower. Mm. And how much further into the flight will that happen? The jettisoning of the Escape tower. Escape tower. Uh, about a、uh, hundred seconds, also. A hundred seconds. That's about a minute, forty seconds into the flight. We could see the separation, the jettisoning of the emergency escape、and、tower. This, I, I believe at this moment it's already supersonic,、mm. and、uh, already passed what we call the max Q,、uh, which means、uh, the maximum、uh, aerodynamic forces to the launch vehicle. I mean, this is something the Taikonauts would have experienced in their training,、yeah. also. Okay, yes, jettisoned.、Right. Yeah. Okay, the escape tower has now been jettisoned. And the next critical step will be the separation of the four boosters. About two minutes. About two minutes into the flight, we see we also heard voice that all the ground station is tracking very normally, either the optical telescopes and the radars. I love hearing them. I love hearing them report that everything is going on smoothly. Normally, they have a very calming, very soothing voice. Great. The boosters、oh, no, yeah. have come off.、So. Four boosters. Oh, and also the first stage separated. The first stage has been separated. Yeah. They have a camera on the rear part of the second stage to monitor the working of the main engine of the second stage.、Mm. We have one main engine with a thrust about about eighty tons, and also four vernier engines to change the attitude of the launch vehicle.、Mm. So we can see the optical images based on the ground telescope.、Uh, oh, this is what I mentioned the, the video from the camera mounted on the rear part of the second stage.、Mm. We can see the big thrust is the Main engine, and this is the engine mounted inside the payload bearing. So the next、uh, step will be the separation of the payload bearings. The separation of the payload bearing will be great, the great. Yes, that's separation. That's separation. Okay.、Ah, now it's in the sunlight. The、uh, the astronauts inside the cabin can see the sunlight through the two windows. I mean, some of their predecessors used to, you know, play with pens once、yeah. they reach zero gravity. And、so、the next see... step, after several minutes, will be the shutdown of the main engine.、Hmm. But still, the four Vernier engine 
will be still continue working to adjust is to make sure that it's precise enough. Yeah, I'm happy to see that the Taikonauts are doing fine. They seem to be doing okay in their seats. Uh, you know, that's the, uh, the Shenzhou uh, 617 uh, flying east route along its trajectory. We have the Weinan, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Weinan uh, ground station in Shanxi province. Mm. And also we have the uh, Taiyuan satellite launch center. We also have the ground station. So this stage will probably take a little bit longer. Yeah, exactly. And also you can see the background is the horizon of the Earth, very bright. They were already outside the atmosphere. I mean, all of these cameras, they withstand such high temperature. They, they, they work magic. Well, you know, that is still there is a diff uh, interval between the camera and the rocket engine. So it's not in the very high temperature, still very safe. Okay. And you can see the small vernier engines just uh, on the left. So that vernier engine is used to change the attitude of the uh, for, uh, this, this second Got stage. It. Look at the Shenzhou 16 crew watching from the space station. Uh, uh, with the continuous working of the rocket engines because the propellants are become less and less and the acceleration will be greater and greater. So they will feel uh, the G-forces acting to their body are increasing at this mm. moment. So this is what they're going through at this point in the flight. Okay, Qingdao station has already uh, captured the uh, flying object. Qingdao is the last ground station to track the uh, combination. Okay, so this is the part where the Taikonauts could feel a little bit more discomfort in their uh, seats. But it's already better than in the atmosphere. You see that in the atmosphere, because the international... Oh, you can see the 3D, in, uh, 3D animation. Mm. Uh, we can see the links between the ground stations and the uh, uh, launch vehicle. Mm. There are multiple ground stations have uh, tracking the uh, launch vehicle, and uh, all of them are receiving the telemetry date, uh, which presents the current status of the launch vehicle. So we can have a 3D uh, uh, animation, although it is an animation, but it represents the real status of the mm. flying objects. You were saying, Professor, that at this point the Taikonauts are feeling a little bit better than... Yes, uh, experience the G-forces and also the vibration. You can see that the main engine is still working, but the next step will be the shutdown of the main engine. Now seven minutes have passed. Uh, usually the shutdown will have about eight to nine minutes. Yeah, on the right bottom corner, the Shenzhou 16 crew is watching, watching, as I mentioned, uh, the Shenzhou 17 crew. I mean, they must be very happy to welcome the Shenzhou 17 crew because this will mean that their mission, their six month long mission, will soon come to an end. They return to Earth on October 30th, and there will be that happy um, meeting, happy handover. They will welcome their new colleagues uh, after six or seven hours. With open arms, I'm sure. So in six and a half hours or so, the spacecraft will conduct an automatic Okay, run the, the main engine target. is shut down. The main engine has now shut down. This means that the, uh, the Shenzhou spaceship is already in orbit, but we will adjust its trajectory with the four vernier engines to make it more precise. Mm. It is the minute that leave the ground that uh, the, the, the astronauts will feel uh, more uncomfortable. But right now it's getting more stabilized. Exactly. Because right. the main engine has shut down, there is no greater G-forces acting right. on their body. Yeah. It, yeah, it's not, when we sit in the vehicles or the airplane, it's really acceleration. Yeah. That is uh, mm. having a big stress on us. So they take the, off and land in the right. So yes. the next critical step will be the shutdown of the four warning engines. And at this moment, as Professor Liu has mentioned, they will experience the zero G. Right. Mm -hmm. And with this camera mounted uh, on the second stage, looking forward, it will monitor the separation of the Shenzhou spaceship. It will monitor the separation of the Shenzhou space 
uh, spacecraft from the uh, carrier rocket. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so just on the previous uh, video, we can see uh, still we have the connection communication link between the Qingdao station and the uh, launch vehicle. And Qingdao being the last ground station. Yeah. So the separate point is just above the Pacific Ocean, uh, very close to the eastern coast of China. Actually speaking, near the Shandong province and Jiangsu province. Changjiang Liu Hao is the, uh, what we call the Yuan Wang Six space tracking ship of China. So it is now in the Pacific Ocean to be the last one to support the launch. How many of these tracking ships do we have for this mission? Do we know that? Uh, mm, 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 it depends. Oh, okay, this so, is the key moment the spacecraft has separated from the carrier rocket. Professor Yang, does that mean that Shenzhou 17 is now in its predetermined orbit? Uh, we, will, uh, we will ha have some checking whether the orbital parameters is accurate enough. Only in these circumstances we can announce it is a successful launch. Moreover, there is announced also another two important steps. One is to, you know, that's the uh, unfolding of the solar panels and also the deployment of the uh, hanging engine to the data relay satellite. So there you can see on the left is the Shenzhou 17 crew, the Shenzhou 16 crew. Yeah, they are watching the coverage. Obviously they are watching the coverage, they are watching um, what the Shenzhou 17 crew are faring, how they are doing, and they will meet each other in about six and a half hours aboard the Tiangong Space Station. So our Shenzhou 17 crew has already, all these three crew members have already uh, entered the club of astronauts. Absolutely, and they're flipping, look, they're, the pens are floating again. Yeah. They're flipping through that they, handbook They are just again. enjoying the yeah. zero-g. They're now able to enjoy after you know, the more dangerous, the yeah. more risky so, part look, of the flight. This is a video comes from the camera mounted on the propulsion module of mm. our Shenzhou spaceship. Mm. So it can monitor the unfolding process of the solar panels. Look at our beautiful blue planet. Just above the Pacific Ocean. Just above the Pacific Ocean. The propulsion module will conduct several orbit maneuvers to chase the ta its target, the Tiangong Space Station, mm. and to accomplish the rendezvous and the docking. It will work all automatically. Mm. Professor Yang, they don't have to do anything, right, at this point, but they're flipping through the handbook. What does that tell us? Uh, no, are they, they are, actually speaking, the, the three astronauts have very important role to monitor everything. So if How do they monitor from to from check? You, you know, there are instruments and uh, uh, there are echoes of every parameter. Great. Okay, the solar, those are their solar panels, right? Yeah, unfolded. Okay, the solar panels on the spacecraft have just unfolded, which indicates, well, primitive primitive success of the launch. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, that, that's, uh, we, uh, uh, on the uh, propulsion module, we have two solar wings and they each have four panels. We're hearing that the solar panels have deployed. The previous voice comes from the astronauts because, as I mentioned, uh, there are instruments to uh, provide them the, all the uh, critical parameters. So they're able to see that the solar panels have deployed normally? Not to see with their eyes, but to see in the instruments, the data. Okay. The, data. the data. So they were reporting back to their ground <laughs> colleagues <laughs> that based on the data they see in the instruments, the solar uh, panels the, are working. The SADA, fine. or the Solar Array Drive Assembly, also work normally. <laughs> I think after they get out of the sight of the uh, detection on the ground uh, station, the astronauts will play a more active role in uh, reporting data. Don't worry. Uh, just uh, uh, two minutes before, there is a voice uh, mentioned that 
Tian Lu connected, which means that the data link between our Shenzhou spaceship and uh, Tian uh, Tianlian data relay uh -huh. satellite has not connected. So there will be a, a continuous connection. Right, and uh, surveillance also. Yeah. 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 Right. Gentlemen, uh, we are being watched by a lot of uh, social media users. This exciting blast off uh, is being live streamed on CGTN's YouTube channel. Many users are expressing their excitement in the comment section. John Tatori says, Wish everyone luck in space adventure, not just China. Any success for humanity is good. John, I agree with you. I think my guests agree with you also. And Han Tua says, we come in peace to the creatures and life in outer space, charity, all and malice towards none. Well, if there is aliens and outer space life forms, they'd be very happy to hear that. I guess so. And Cam35MM says, humans are still in the primitive aspect of space travel. Chemical energy is used to get us out from Earth's gravity. Then it's about momentum and vector. And we're hearing from the Beijing Aerospace Control Center. Yeah. And also some communication with the astronauts. Now you can see that they will open their face masks because it's already in orbit and very, very safe, not necessary to uh, be closed by the face mask. Hmm. I mean, Professor Liu here, just the comments that are read to our viewers now, some of them mentioning that the purpose about space development is, is it's not about one country, it's not about just individual countries, it's for the greater good of the humanity. I do want to get your take and your thoughts, Professor mm -hmm. Liu, on how China can make good on its promises to benefit the international community Beijing with whatever it finds with its manned space programs. Well, technological advancement is really the pre uh, precondition for us to reach there, however promise we can really deliver. And uh, the other is really the economic prowess, because uh, without really economic war, uh, you don't get the right type of supply, and you don't really motivate people, and particularly on the commercial use of stuff. And third is uh, what can be the deliverable from the other space exploration, and do they really bring back uh, substantial stuff for scientific research, and also for uh, the commercial use of it. So uh, this is something that China has really delivered so far and that really brings just the, the excitement. That it's in orbit. Uh, uh, the commander in Beijing Flight Control Center just announced the uh, orbit, uh, orbit, orbital parameters of our Shenzhou spaceship. Uh, it's in a very good condition and uh, this is a good start for the uh, round one docking procedure to our Tiangong Space Station. Okay. And it will connect to the front docking port of Tiangong Space Station. Got it. Because yeah. at this moment, uh, the bottom docking pod uh, is attached to the Shenzhou 16 uh, mm. uh, spaceship. Mm. When we talk about international collaboration, I'm sorry oh, to yeah. interrupt yeah. you, Professor Leo. Yeah. What does that look like? The participation yeah. of foreign yeah. astronauts, that's yeah. what we can yeah. think of. But could international collaboration also include other aspects? Well, in the initial phase, actually, simply the satisfaction of the people's curiosity and guesswork is something that's uh, very useful uh, by exploring the unknown. Professors, let's hear from the official experts and comrades. Based on the flight data and the report from Beijing Command and Control Center, the Long March 2 FY-17 carrier rocket has sent Shenzhou 17 manned spacecraft to the preset orbit. The solar panels have been unfolded successfully and are functioning well. I declare the launch of Shenzhou 17 mission a complete success. Thank you. A complete success. A round of applause from everyone here who has worked tirelessly yeah, that's quite a relief for, uh, what a uh, sigh of relief for everyone right, for everyone that is involved